Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome again to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. I say welcome again to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. And to, tonight, um, I'm on a continuing series of military content, almost to the end, with one more um, um, program to cover. This is for the United States um, Coast Guard um, off Commissioned Officers Program. You know, so I have um, this is next next to the last um, program, and this is for a um, for a couple several subscribers asked, you know, um, for information concerning the Coast Guard and how to become um, an officer. So I am answering the call, and so on um, this program or this pathway, it is um, the direct commissioned. Selected school. So this is the DS DCSS program. That's the um, acronym. And so basically, um, for this career field, DCSS, Direct Commission Selected um, School Program, um, you can become a commissioned officer in the United States Coast Guard through this program. And pretty much the information um, in the general framework, as for all the others, um, is pretty much gonna be the same but there will be certain modifications and um, differences according to the rate or the career field but anyway let's um get into it okay um okay the dcss program okay college graduates who have been um exposed to military training through um collegiate leveled armed services reserve officer training corps rotc programs okay um, equivalent um, reg regimented um, programs at select colleges or other federal military academies while earning an undergraduate undergraduate degree they are eligible to apply for the Coast Guard's direct commissioning select school program okay now um, the DCSS it seeks to offer direct commissions to um, high-performing individuals who have already proven their leadership ability and desire to serve others through rigorous um, programs, okay? Um, generally speaking, a broad range of mission fields are available to DCSS graduates for obviously the initial assignment in the um, Coast Guard, and the possibilities include but are not limited to assignment to a Coast Guard sector as a member of the Response or Prevention Department or uh, let's see the um, or assignment afloat on a Coast Guard cutter. But um, basically, in a nutshell, this specific um, rate or career for the Coast Guard would um, be well suited for those that have been in the um, the ROTC or either other military um, academy um, type programs. So if they have those of you that may have prior. Um, military um, training through these programs not um I'm not speaking of um, active duty but who have been say through a um, you know a, um, a ROTC program or you know other such programs you know this right here would be a career field that would be really suited for individuals like that as they've had um, some form of schooling at a military academy or some type of training Okay, so moving on, um, the initial assignments and training, okay? Um, DCSS, and I'm just going to use that acronym to make it short, worked with a Coast Guard assignment officer um, after they've been selected. The assignment officer, they'll review the individual's education, experience, and their qualifications. In addition to that, um, to what um, they receive a dream sheet, okay? And so what the assignment officer will do, such as any of the, um, any other programs or with other um, individuals in the military when they leave basic training or their, um, their um, AIT or um, technical schools upon graduation, before they leave, they get what's known as a, um, a it, I, we call it, the military calls it a dream sheet. But it's basically a sheet where the specific branch of service will list out um, a number of bases um, for a specific career field and where that military member can serve at. And so the, um, that individual, 
they basically select from the choices that are given and it goes basically i think they give you maybe like maybe eight choices it goes like from maybe one to eight some cases might be more in depending on the branch of service some maybe less but um like one to eight choices and you basically will pick from that examples would be um, you may have assignments such as, say, um, a Coast Guard base, say, one in Hawaii. You may have another one in North Carolina, another one in, say, um, in, in um, Lubbock, Texas, you know, and you basically will select um, what your top priorities are, where you'd like to be stationed. Or they can um, give you maybe certain... Um, give you certain geographic locations or regions where you like to serve at and you just pick out of that and then the Coast Guard will determine based on their needs first and then they'll take a look you know at um, the individual members desires if they match what the Coast Guard's needs are then the Coast Guard will accommodate the military members or the um, the um, graduate they'll accommodate um, their desires in duty stations or duty location all right, moving along. Um, let's see here. Um, the assignment officer, um, as I stated in other um, videos, they also will take a look at the um, at the um, the orders for the specific rate or position, and they look and see what best, um, which is what's best suited for the Coast Guard and the talents and abilities of that um, military member. Basically, like I said before, what the Coast Guard or Uncle Sam wants comes first before our desires or what their needs are. Okay. Now, following commissioning, um, which occurs approximately 30 days prior to attending the direct commission officer um, course in New London, Connecticut, such as with the um, other pathways, new officers um, will receive orders for a um, PCS, permanent change of station, and they will report directly to um, their first duty location for a brief period and then they will be given orders to go on um, TDY tour duty to attend the um, DCO course or um, commissioning academy I'm just gonna say commissioning academy or school um, in New London Connecticut so they can go through the commissioning program the commissioning program is approximately four to five weeks such as it is with the um, other rates to be um, commissioned in the um, United States Coast Guard and upon graduation um, obviously um, let me get before graduation while they're there at the school they are going to um, you know receive initial indoctrination to the traditions of the Coast Guards um, the programs that are in the service and you know um, specific training you know for that um, particular rate or career field and then they will return to their um, duty station or their, their initial duty station to begin um, service as a commissioned officer in this specific career field. All right, let's see for this career path. Okay, during subsequent um, assignments, um, DCSS officers, um, they can expect to broaden um, their experience um, within the operational community. Basically, um, expect to take advantage of opportunity or expect to learn and grow in this particular career field. That's basically um, what they're saying, okay, for what they've been assigned. And um, for these new officers, which will be junior grade, um, they will be given, start off with um, basic levels of responsibility, and throughout their career, it will increase to different levels of leadership. Understand that as a commissioned officer in any branch of service, um, you are now, you are, are a leader. Even if you're at the lowest level, which is junior grade, you still are a leader because you have to um, lead, you know, and enlisted. And officers operate from the strategic level of the armed forces. So you are you are um, a leader, and you're being trained and groomed as a leader to move on to higher levels in this profession. Okay, and so take advantage of it when you get these opportunities to excel and grow your career take advantage of it you know when the military offers you um you know various training opportunities or even um different um different assignments you know take advantage and make the most of those because this right here will help you grow um professionally and you know as a leader in the military and then 
whether you decide to retire in the Coast Guard or whether you decide to leave after um, your commitment is up, these skills that they give you, this experience, it's invaluable, especially on the outside, and it does translate over. And you can put all of this um, on your resume. And with an honorable, honorable discharge and a degree, hey, you know, um, this right here will really open some doors for you. So you definitely want to um, take advantage of it. Now, what are some of the areas that they offer? Um, they obviously, you can have special duties or special assignments, um, you know, um, subspecialties, which include intelligence, you know, be, and you build the sections including intelligence, human resources, engineering, and um, C4, you know, I, IT. Um, international affairs, legal recruiting, financial management and training. So, you know, you have a range of different areas that um, you can gain management and leadership experience and exposure. So I would definitely, definitely recommend for new officers, take advantage of, of these opportunities. Take advantage of them because they're definitely going to help you. Now, let's go to the eligibility requirements. Um, the eligibility requirements as with the... Um, um, other pathways in the Coast Guard. Um, your age, 21, not um, younger than 21, but no older than 41 years of age. Um, character standards, um, have to have outstanding moral character, okay? Applicants currently in the Coast Guard, applicants are, are ineligible for commissioning if in the 36 months prior, I mean three years prior to um, their first time attending a uh, DCO class panel, right? Um, they, in a selection cycle, that they have been convicted by a court martial, been awarded um, non judicial punishment, such as an Article 15. If they receive an unsatisfactory conduct mark, received a mark of less than four in any performance dimension, received a negative, um, received any um, negative administra administrative derogatory marks or been involved in an alcohol-related incident. So, um, like I said, once again, um, Uncle Sam's not going to spend this kind of money on you or invest these resources. They want the best in people that have um, outstanding character. Um, let's see. Next, you have to be a U.S. citizen. And number four, you have to have the ability to obtain a secret clearance. So you must be eligible to obtain a secret clearance. Granted, secret clearances in the military are the lowest of all the clearances in the federal government, but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying, they do dig on them and they cost money. So they are going to dig and go into your background. Not as much as they would with a top secret or confidential or high or, you know, a top, top secret, a top, there's other levels of it, you know, where they really dig. You know what I'm saying? The other levels, they may go back, like, I think maybe um 20 years, something like that. So, you know, um, make sure that um, your record is clean, you know, else that'll disqualify you from this program. Okay, regarding dependents, okay, you may not have more than three dependents. And your spouse is considered a dependent regardless of their military status. Okay, Coast Guard active duty applicants, E5 and above, with a minimum of four years active duty military service, and that is excluding duty for training um, of at least two years of which must be Coast Guard active duty service. Um, they, out of those, that um, period, 24 months, you have have to have had um, primary or sole custody of your dependents. Okay, and then all eligible applicants must provide um, the Coast Guard with a dependent um, care plan with an indefinite general power of attorney. And the reason for this is that... Um, they want to make sure that you have your affairs in order and that there will be someone responsible that you can count on to take care of your dependents in the event that you may have to go on certain assignments or missions or um, TDYs or tour duties that um, may require you to be away from your family. So somebody has, to, has that they know is responsible and that you've given power of attorney over those affairs to take care of them in your absence while um, you are performing your duties for the Coast Guard, you know, should you have that type of assignment 
or mission. They don't want anything hindering you. Uh, the military will always tell you, hey, we didn't issue you a family, so make sure you have those things in order. They don't want anything that's going to interrupt you from performing your military duties in the Coast Guard. Okay, um, education. You have to have a bachelor, a bachelor degree or higher from one of the following schools and have had participated and been a member of the Corps of Cadets, the ROTC program, or any equivalent regimented um, program, okay? Such as the Citadel, um, Mary Baldwin College, Virginia Women's Institute for Leadership, University of North Georgia, Norwich University, Prairie View A&M University, um, Texas A&M University, Virginia Military Institute, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University, and let's see, um, Federal Service Academies, at least two years at a Federal Service Academy, including the United States Naval Academy, United States Air Force Academy, and United States Military Academy, West Point. Hey, prestigious, how about that? Graduates of other institutions with solid academic curricula and strong ROTC or Corps of Cadets programs will be considered by the um, Coast Guard RC on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, ROTC, at least two years of ROTC must have been successfully completed to be considered. Um, college seniors, um, you are eligible to apply if the, the above um, criteria is met. Bachelor degree will be um, conferred um, prior to commissioning date which will occur approximately 30 days prior to attending um, your first DCO course for which um, the convening panel is making selections. So that particular panel that is residing over that um, DCO course, your first, first go round, if you are due to receive um, your bachelor degree or higher, whatever degree you're about, if you're about to receive, but if um, yeah, it says specifically for bachelor's degrees because if you have a master's, obviously you already have a bachelor's degree. So for those that are on your way to graduating, as long as you are within 30 days prior um, to that convening panel for that DCO course or selection board, um, and they know that you are going to receive your bachelor's degree um, really soon, then you are eligible to apply for um, this program. Let's see, anyone that has a foreign degree that's went to foreign universities, applicants who have degrees conferred by a foreign school uh, must include their application of, um, of each course so it can be assessed from an organization such as an education credential evaluators. In addition to the inclusion of the translation of their degree, provided the language is other than English. So if it's other than English, then obviously um, it's going to have to be um, translated and um, these evaluators will evaluate whether or not these courses are up to the same standards as universities in the United States. So if the credits, you know, are in the education is deemed equal to what is taught in the curriculum in the United States. And so you um, be allowed to um, move forward and have those credits counted. If not, then you have to retake those classes to get those credits and then you would have to submit that with your package and apply then for this commissioning program okay regarding your finances um, you have to meet all financial obligations required by the Coast Guard not have a debt to income ratio in excess of 80 percent and that's 80 percent of um, the applicants um, projected income basically in the grades of 01 02 and 03 um, applicants going this for, for this program depending on your qualifications and education um, the the panel board will decide what grade you get once you graduate so what they're saying is that um, whatever the income that will be made in those three grades um, you can't have a, um, a debt to income ratio that exceeds you know those salaries or those incomes other than that that will disqualify you from this program so make sure your finances are in order okay you cannot have filed um bankruptcy in the last 10 years if you have student loans um the applicants have to um disclose it to the recruiter 
and any student loan payments that are in deferment, you have to let your recruiter know and what is the anticipated date and amount of repayment of those loans. It, this is a must and a requirement. Okay, um, interview. Okay, um, applicants for the DCSS um, career or um, this rate, um, they have to receive the recommendation of a Coast Guard interview board, which will be administered by three Coast Guard officers. So you will go through an interview. Uh, military service is not required, obviously, as you have those graduates and people that are coming from the outside. Um, let's see, uh, maximum amount of active duty service, okay? Um, to be eligible for this program, you have to have less than 10 years of non-Coast Guard active duty military service as of the commissioning date. And it is equivalent to the date that the applicant, if they are selected, will take their oath of office. Okay, Coast Guard officers, all right. Um, let's see, ADPL officers. Okay, applicants currently holding a commission in the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve who are on the active duty promotion list are not eligible to apply, ADPL. Okay, so if you're uh, already a commissioned officer in the Coast Guard and you have a line number or basically um, a promotion number to put on your next rank or grade, um, they're telling you that um, you're, you're not eligible to apply for this because you're already an officer in a certain career field in the Coast Guard and you have a promotion coming up. So you're ineligible. Okay, now for those that, are, let's see, IDPL officers, if a reserve officer on the inactive duty promotion list meets the eligibility criteria, he or she may apply for the program provided a conditional resignation approved by the Coast Guard PSC um, RPM is included in the application package. So um, if you're not on a promotion um, promotion list and you happen to be an officer and you want to apply for this program and you basically want to switch into another career field, um, you can, but you got to make sure that you have the right, um, the paperwork done for a release and a resignation. Obviously, that's going to involve your commanding officer. So, signing off on that. All right, next. Um, commissioned officers who have been um, separated or removed from active duty from any branch of service as a result, one, of non-selection for promotion. Two, um, you couldn't, were in, unable to extend your career, um, do an extension, so you could um, serve longer or integration may not apply for any Coast Guard commissioning program. So that, that means if you are officer in any branch of service, under those um, three reasons, if um, you weren't able to do those things, then um, you need, you're in, you can't apply, you're not, not eligible. Okay, now members um, that currently serve in another branch of service, or um, IRR and Coast Guard Reservists, okay? They have to um, get us uh, an approved DD Form um, 368. It's conditional release. Have that signed and approved and in your application package. That um, releases you from that current duty from that other branch of service, you know, and also for, you know, um, other reservists and Coast Guard Reservists. You know, that releases you from that duty so that you can um, enroll in this um, commissioning officer program in the Coast Guard. Okay, um, let's see. Release approval, the validity period. The release, with using a DD Form 368 conditional release, um, shall be valid at a minimum through the date of which, through the date of the panel for which the applicant is applying, okay? Ideally, the release should be valid through the projected uh, session date for that panel, okay? Um, we're getting close to the end here. Coast Guard Reservists, Coast Guard um, IRR, and other military service IRR, you know, basically um, your, uh, your other reservists or inactive reservists, recruiters shall submit the DD Form 368, okay? with um, only section one complete to the C, the Coast Guard, you know, RC Sessions branch at CGR um, 5MB DD Form 368 at uscoastguard.mil. Okay, members of other um, 
military service except IRR, the applicant shall submit the DD Form 368 with Section 1 complete through their chain of command um, to their services authorizing official, which is going to be the commanding officer. Okay. Um, once approved, the DD Form 368 and any other approval documents shall be submitted with the application package. So it'll be, it has to be included in there. Um, you will be required to um, do a, undergo a um, medical or physical exam. You must pass a commissioning physical to include normal color vision. Um, you have to meet height and weight standards. And for Coast Guard members, um, um, you have to meet the, you know, height, weight, and body fat standards of the Coast Guard, MAW, um, body fat standards per constant, M1020.8H. So you guys should know what that is, and the Coast Guard was we're going to look that up. Um, let's see, you have to complete a structured physical fitness program while you out, are at the DCO school or academy, the commissioning officer school in New London, Connecticut. Uh, test score. There is no test score requirement for um, this particular um, um, rate or program. Um, tattoos. Okay. Applicants may not have tattoos or body markings that are inconsistent with the Coast Guard tattoo, body marking, body piercing, and mutilation policy. And almost at the end, um, lastly, um, you need to read and study the DCO pre-reporting guide. Okay. And um, it is required. Applicants have to have read and understand the DCO pre-reporting guide. And let's see, upon commissioning, applicants will receive a three-year, which is a minimum, active duty obligation and will be commissioned as an ensign 01. All right. And pretty much um, a lot of it is the same as um, the other candidates that are seeking to be um, commissions officers in the Coast Guard, but just they had different career fields or in the Coast Guard calls it a rate. So that is the scoop for this one. And this is almost at the end. I only have one more um, commissioning officer program um, to go through or another career field to become a commissioned officer in the um, Coast Guard. So almost at the end, guys, you know. But um, thank you for being patient and hanging on with me. And thank you for listening, you know. And if you have any questions, um, just please feel free to um, email me. And I will do my best to point you in the right direction. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to get it for you. But um, that's all I have, you know, on this one. And so we're almost done, guys. We're almost done um, with this before we get ready to move on to um something you know something else you know and obviously other military content and other content but the name of my channel is eric broadus youtube that's e-r-i-c-b-r-o-a-d-u-s youtube or eric broadus youtube.com and i have a podcast also called snacks thoughts s-n-a-k-z-t-h-o-u-g-h-t-s snacks thoughts and you can find snacks thoughts podcasts on anchor spotify spreaker Apple Podcasts, iTunes, SoundCloud, Radio PBM, and a host of other social social sorry social media um, outlets. So please um, subscribe to um, Snacks Thoughts, and also um, subscribe to Eric Broadus YouTube, and smash that bell to become a subscriber. Smash that like button to like the video and leave comments. And if you don't like it, hey, smash the unlike button and you can leave comments. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And maybe you may have information that I have not missed. So if you do, please um, leave in the comment section and inform me so that I may inform others. And I thank you for um, listening. Thank you to all my subscribers. I really do appreciate you guys. And please push out. Um, my YouTube channel, Eric Brothers YouTube, and also Snacks Thoughts. Please push them out. Share it with your friends, um, family, enemies, frenemies, um, cats, goats, bats, and etc. Share it and push it out. Get the word out. And I thank you guys. That's all I have for this one. And have a great evening, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.